Welcome to Stanford Scholar. In this talk, we are going to discuss the research paper, Deep Residual Learning for Image Recognition. What are we aiming to solve here? Deeper neural nets with greater representation power show higher accuracy for complex tasks. Network depth being important for image recognition, each layer finds some features and aids subsequent layers in finding more complex features. Receptive field size also increases with more layers. The author showed that for plane nets, training and test errors increased with increasing layers. Seen are two plane networks, 20 and 56 layers deep, used for image recognition on the Cypher 10 dataset. The accuracy of these models started saturating, caused by the gradient descent degradation problem. Unlike overfitting, here both training and test errors were high. The network was trained with batch normalization to prevent vanishing gradient and to let forward propagated signals with non-zero variances. It was observed that backward propagated signals were not vanishing either. For current SGT-based optimizers, deeper nets don't yield accuracy at least that of shallower networks. It is interesting to see why the optimizer degrades performance and how architectural changes like residual learning tackle this degradation problem. But what should we use to train the layers? Unreference functions or residual functions? To find the answer, we must dive into the discussions in the paper. The authors propose a residual network which is deepened instead of getting wider. This causes lesser parameters and a reduced effect of the vanishing gradient problem. Function X denotes the input to a set of layers. HX is the mapping function from input to output for a stack of few layers. Instead of directly learning HX, the authors propose that the residual fx equal to hx minus x can be merged with the original input to recover hx. Degradation makes it hard to approximate hx in plane nets. With residual learning reformulation and optimal identity mappings, the solver may simply drive fx towards zero. In shortcut connections, a few intermediate layers are directly connected to auxiliary classifiers for addressing degradation and vanishing gradient problems. Now let's see some primary contributions of this paper. The authors showed that residual learning can be used to optimize the training of deep networks, avoid degradation problem, and decrease error rate for deeper networks. ResNet achieved 3.57% test error rate on ImageNet dataset, surpassing human error at 5%. The ResNet finds good application in real world. Let's look at some of them. The technique's huge success, visible by its win over some major crucial competitions, will mean a great boost to applications such as medical image analysis, space and satellite image processing. Let's look at the approach and the architecture taken by authors. The authors propose a method to approximate the residual function and adding that to input. They introduce the concepts of zero padding and linear projection to tackle the cases when there is a dimension mismatch. The authors have discussed plane networks which are similar to previous architectures like VGGNet. The model has various operations like convolutions, pooling, batch normalizations, ReLU layers, and softmax. Taking plane networks as a base, shortcut connections were added. Let's find out some methods used by authors for evaluation. The authors train plane and residual nets, each 18 by 34 layer CNNs. The error increases for plane networks when depth is increased from 18 to 34, while it reduces in residual nets with increased depth. Error rate of ResNet is lower than plane net. The authors compared A, zero padding, B, projection shortcuts used for increasing dimensions, and C, all shortcuts as projections. The accuracy of C greater than B greater than A, but marginal differences indicated that projection is not important for addressing degradation problem. Experiments showed that the residual networks performed much better than existing nets and the degradation problem was solved. Depth of rest net for best accuracy is over four times deeper than previous deep nets and is only limited by hardware capabilities. Lastly, the authors trained 20 to 56 layer plane nets and rest nets. Rest nets again outperform plane nets on Cypher. Responses after BN were analyzed, showing that rest nets had smaller magnitude responses, indicating small perturbations to identity function. It was observed that the optimization is easier, very deep rest nets are not immune to overfitting. Let's look at some findings and results of this paper. 
The paper reported some significant findings which gave insights about causes of degradation and optimizing learning residual functions which train deeper nets. Let's have a look back at the questions and see if they were answered. There was a significant change in the number of layers with the introduction of ResNet, with great results proving that the deeper, the better, and the new ResNet architecture helped up with the degradation problem. ResNets help build deep models with reduced degradation. Complex image features can be easily extracted using ResNet, as we can have thousands of layers with each extracting a different feature without losing accuracy. Thanks for watching.